you. You're the real stars of the day, so congratulations. We're really excited about supporting you in this. And then, yes, Miss Janet is right. Um, Lola and Megan, you probably see at the library a lot if you come. They both work in the children's department, so you probably see them down there. And they did the hard work to bring in one of your young Hoosier authors this year. So that's the next part of your day. You're going to get to meet an author, hear from an author, all sorts of cool stuff still to come. So congratulations. The hard part is behind you. Now you just get to have fun for the rest of your time here. And then I okay? Can add another time now, but this one's appropriate. The one I did other, I was in the wrong hat. <laughs> so this one, as you read, we have an extra surprise. So we have the next book after When Pigs Fly, right? Did I get it right? And the, the book... <laughs> To Pig to Fail, a copy autographed for everyone that participated today. So that was made possible by one of our after school extra learning grants. So we're really excited that we're able to provide that next book for you to read because you all read the first one. So now you get to read the second one. So we'd like to introduce Rob Harrell. Hi there, y'all. How are you doing? Hi. All right. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Now, I don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to kind of whiz through my presentation here. But this is what I usually do when I go talk at schools. I kind of talk about how I went from being a fourth grader who was obsessed with drawing cartoons to now where I get to write stories and illustrate them and I get to, my dog sleeps at my feet and it's kind of the best gig ever, okay? So uh, it's, it's kind of different than when you go into like business or something like that. It's kind of a winding road. So I've tried a bunch of things, so I'm gonna show you. Let's see if this reaches. Yep, okay. So in fourth grade, I'm going to start. In fourth grade, I was really into drawing. I, the newspaper would come and I would copy all the comics, you know, Charlie Brown and Beetle Bailey and whoever was in there. And um, then I figured out that my friend Steve Ferris liked to draw too. And we started getting really competitive. And we started working on each other. I'm getting better. He didn't like the way I drew feet and I didn't like the way he drew hands. Um, so eventually we decided in fourth grade that it was time for us to put out our own magazine. So we, we uh, sold subscriptions to our classmates and our, and our friends. And uh, we, we ended up coming out with uh, the magazine Freak Out. It was kind of a ripoff of a magazine called Mad Magazine that was really big back in the time. And it was just full of cartoons. Um, but it had our own characters like... I don't know if you can see that little, up in the left corner, that's, that's Henry the Cat. That was my first character I ever came up with. And then that's Bob the Blob below him. And he was just a blob with a cigar stub and a clown nose. And then Steve drew the mouse. He just called him the mouse. So we, we put it out. It wasn't the most sophisticated cartoons, I'll tell you. Um, that was one of them. It's cut off. It says, oh, shoot. And it's just a guy diving in you know, Cliff Diver diving into a shark. And then there was another one. That was like a series. There was a lion timer inside a lion saying, oh, shucks. Um, but, uh, but a few things happened. I really liked writing the cartoons. I really liked drawing the cartoons. And then I loved the reaction that I got from my classmates and all that. Um, long story short, it turns out that running off copies at your dad's office costs money. So uh, we didn't end up doing any other issues, just one issue, and we had to give all the quarters back, which uh, stunk. But, you know, hey, it was a lesson in business. Uh, so anyway, from then on, I just decided, I, went out, I told my parents, I went home and said, I'm going to be a cartoonist when I grow up. And I started working on all kinds of different kinds of cartoons. I would, anybody who would let me publish a cartoon, I'd do it for them. So I did stuff for the middle school yearbook and the newspaper. I'm from Bloomington, Indiana, and so when I was in high school, I did stuff for the high school you know, newspaper yearbook, and even the local paper let me start doing editorial cartoons for them. And then I got to college. I went to DePaul over in Greencastle, and I did uh, all kinds of... Um, 
you know, drawings, uh, cartoons for them. But I wanted to be a syndicated cartoonist, which means like Garfield or something, where you're in the newspaper seven days a week, right? Uh, so I knew how hard it was going to be because, like, they would get about 6,000 people would try to get syndicated each year, and they'd choose two. So I, I thought I'd better get started. So this is one I did while I was in college, and uh, it didn't get picked up, and I'm so glad it didn't because it was just weird. Um, I, I think I thought I was being really clever, but it was just it was just odd. It was called Fester's Travels. It was about this six-foot frog and his alligator buddy traveling across the country. About the funniest thing that happened in there was they stopped at a Debbie Gibson concert and the alligator ate Bart Simpson. Um, so it was, it was weird and they, they passed. So I have a whole drawer full of rejection letters of all these different comic strip ideas. So I graduated and I needed to make, start living, you know, make a living, move out of my parents' house. So I started working as an illustrator. So I went to downtown Indy and I took my portfolio and I showed you know, my stuff to anybody who would buy art. And eventually they started hiring me to do, do, do little jobs. Like this was for a, a small legal magazine and it was about kids getting out for a holiday break uh, and they just needed to jazz it up a little bit. Uh, this one, let me say first, it came way, way before the Geico Gecko, okay? And, um, but, and I don't even remember what the product was. It was for an ad agency. And I remember the tagline was, uh, Leroy the Lizard loved lapping lemonade in his leafy lair. Um, so, I, and I really liked doing the illustrations, but something was missing. And now that I look back on my career, I can see that it's that uh, I really wanted to tell stories and I wanted to have characters that I could uh, tell stories about. So eventually I came up with the idea for my first comic strip that got picked up. It was called Big Top. Um, so Big Top uh, was about this kid, Pete, that you see at the bottom there, and he's holding all these animals that he's kind of in charge of. He's especially in charge of the clown at the top. I'm not a big fan of clowns. I don't know about any of you. They creep me out. So uh, Stucco was a little more like a wild animal and less like a clown. He didn't speak, and like one time he ate something wrong and blew up to the size of Godzilla and attacked the town as Clownzilla. Um, and, and uh, it launched in about 50, 60 papers, I got almost 60 papers uh, worldwide. It was in places I'd never been, like Paris and Hong Kong, and it was my dream job. So six days a week, I did a black and white comic strip, and then on Sundays, I would do a color Sunday, like this. And again, I told you I don't like clowns, so here I just had an example to draw all kinds of weird looking clowns. But this is a true story. The one on the left there in the green box uh, he is 100% based on my seventh grade science teacher, Mr. Stewart. And uh, yeah, and it's probably not the nicest thing I've ever done, because if you saw them side by side, you'd be like, oh, that's Mr. Stewart. Um, so, uh, but I got it in the newspaper, and it just made me so happy. Okay. Um, I did the strip for, for five years, and then I don't know if any of you have ever heard of my book, Wink. Has anybody in here heard of Wink? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so... You know in Wink that it's based on something I went through. I got sick. I got sick with cancer, actually, uh, about 19 years ago. And so I ended up having to end my strip. Now, that doesn't mean I ended my strip because I got so sick. Um, actually, all through my treatments and everything, I did the strip every day. Um, it was only about a year later when all the medical bills came pouring in, and I realized I wasn't making enough money. I had to stop and do all kinds of other odd jobs here and there. And then eventually my syndicate asked if I wanted to step in and take over this older strip called Adam at Home. It was in a lot more papers, and so it made me more money. And um, I've now been doing Adam at Home for 15 years, which blows my mind. I still do it today. It's a daily strip, um, and that's a lot of work. So doing that and then books on top of it has been tough. Um, but during that time in between, when I, after I had ended Big Top, I was doing all kinds of jobs. I was working four or five jobs, and one of them I thought I'd be a painter, and I started showing in galleries. Um, this is one of my paintings. And uh, I actually did pretty well, but again, I burned out on it, and I think the reason was I want to tell stories. That's just kind of what's at my core. So one day, 
one of the jobs I had, this is the worst job I've ever had in my life. Um, I would film, I would sit in this little room in the back of uh, government commission meetings and film, film the meetings by remote little cameras. And uh, I was filming the Texas Board of Education. And uh, every meeting they had, I would film it. And some of their meetings would last 12 hours. Not a joke. They would go from 10 in the morning till 10 at night. And they could come and go. They could go take a nap or you know, get a coffee or whatever they wanted. But I was stuck in there. So I was bored out of my mind. So I did what any person would do. And I started drawing monsters. Um, so one day I drew this guy. And I drew him on my uh, agenda. And then you can see the words are still on there. Um, and I liked his face. Just something about him. I was like, I wonder if I could do a, a graphic novel about him. And it led to my first graphic novel, which is called Monster on the Hill. Anybody in here heard of it? OK. I'll tell you real quickly what it's about. Um, it's set in a world where every town has a monster that lives outside of town, up on a hill. And about once or twice a week, the monster comes roaring into town and knocks things around and screams and stomps and scares everybody half to death. And the townspeople love it. Okay, it's like their it's like their roller coaster, and so people go from town to town to get scared by other towns' monsters, and then they buy T-shirts and they you know they put on um, I don't know they buy balloons or whatever uh, with the characters. But this town has a depressed monster. He's been sad. All he does is he lays around and sleeps and naps and sighs a lot, and uh, they're sick of it. So they send this doctor. You can see in the carriage there. Uh, they send Dr. Wilkie up the hill to go talk to the monster and try to teach him how to be a scary monster again. And they decide to go off on this road trip to see his old monster buddies to get his mojo back. Uh, and then they, uh, this, this town crier kid stows along on the trip. And they go off and they see his, his best friend, Tentacular, who is, um, they call him Noodles because of his, he's got like the long, yeah, noodly arms. And he looks like a bad guy here, but he's doing his job. Like moments later, they're buying t-shirts of him and that sort of thing. Um, so something weird happened with this movie that hasn't happened, or with this book, that hasn't happened with any of my other books is Hollywood called and wanted to make a movie of it. And they did. And uh, some of you might have heard of it. It's called Rumble. Has anybody seen Rumble? There you go. Okay. So Rumble is on Paramount Plus now. And I will tell you that it is almost 100% completely totally, absolutely nothing like my book, okay? Um, and that's just, that's just what Hollywood does sometimes. They would, they would fly me out there and, and you know, pay for dinner and ask me all these questions and ask my opinions on what they were doing, and I'd give my opinions, and then they'd pat me on the head and send me back to Indiana. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah, they just kind of ignored everything. So uh, anyway, I still think it's a cool movie. I mean, the, the, the animation is beautiful in it. The, the character designs are crazy. They don't look like my characters. Uh, I'll show you, like, there's my Rayburn. And uh, in the movie, they decided he should look more like that. So he's kind of an out of, out of shape uh, wrestler type. And, uh, and then there's how my tentacular looked, kind of like a T-Rex with tentacles. And in the movie, he looks more like, like this. He's kind of a shark man. He's actually a really cool character. Like his arms split apart into tentacles and he lights up and, and he does all this cool stuff. So um, if you get a chance, definitely check it out. You should see it. It's some of, I think some of the message of my book survived, maybe a little bit. Um, and a couple of the names survived, but that's about it. So um, anyway. Let's jump back in time. I had just gotten done doing writing Monster on the Hill. I was starting to trust myself as a writer a little bit. I always thought of myself as an artist, and I was like, hey, I guess I like the writing. So I wrote this series of books about a Zarf, or not a Zarf, a troll named Zarf, uh, who was going to seventh grade in a middle school in a fairy tale world where nobody can stand trolls. They just think trolls are the absolute worst, right? So he's got up, up against it. He's got, you know, in the first one, the king gets kidnapped by these giant weasels, and he has to go save them. Second one, he goes up against the big bad wolf. Third one, there's a deserted island and pirates and sea monsters. And these books were a ton of fun to write and draw. Um, they're set years after the fairy tales that we all know. So, for example, in this one, his best friend on the left there is Kevin Little Pig. And he is the son of one of the famous three Little Pigs. 
And uh, his dad is actually the one who created the brick house that the big wolf, big bad wolf couldn't blow down. So they, uh, they've gone into construction and now they're you know, incredibly wealthy and they live in a mansion. Um, I also have in here the prince. He goes to school with the prince, the little guy in the purple, who is maybe the biggest jerk I've ever written. And, uh, and it's really fun. It's super fun to write for a jerk. If you're going to write something, try it. Put a jerk in there. Because I am full. In, through my bones, I'm full with Midwest nice. And, uh, and then you know, when I get a chance to write about a character like this, I can just kind of go crazy. Um, as I said, it's years after all the fairy tales we know, so another character in the book is Goldilocks, but she's now Miss Locks, the lunch lady. Uh, so she still has like the ringlets in her hair, but they're up under a hairnet. She's slopping out porridge here for kids. Uh, Big Bad Wolf has gone on to form a biker gang called The Paw. They're about to do some crime there. And then uh, this is uh, one of the sea monsters about to crush poor Zarf. Okay, I'm gonna talk briefly about Wink, since a few of you have heard of it. Um, Wink was my next book. It's a s s middle grade book. Uh, it is based on my story with having head cancer. Uh, I'll tell you real briefly, it was 19, 20 years ago. I woke up one morning and my eye was all puffed up. Uh, the next day it was puffed up again. I went to a doctor. And uh, after a series of doctors, we finally got it tested, and it turned out that it was an incredibly rare form of eye cancer. Um, it was the 25th report, reported case of it ever. And um, so my doctors didn't know what to do, and they sent me to all kinds of um, specialists, and we finally, they found the woman, the, the, the doctor, who was the, the, supposed to be the biggest specialist. She was gonna know exactly what to do. And um, they sent me to her. Uh, my wife and I sat down. She came in for a few minutes. Uh, and um, she said, unfortunately, what we're going to have to do is remove this half of your face and give you a, a prosthetic face and then blind you with traditional radiation. And we're going to do that the day after tomorrow. Uh, so my wife and I were stunned, shocked, scared, horrified. And, uh, and then they gave us some books on living with blindness, living with disfigurement, that sort of thing. And um, so we sat around reading those. And then something happened. And I don't know where you fall on miracles or fate or just really, really, really good luck. Um, my dad in Bloomington, Indiana, who was a lawyer at the time, he was uh, sharing space in his office building with some medical people from IU. And one day he was, that day, after I had found out what was going to happen, he was telling some of the other lawyers what was going to happen to my eye. And one of the medical guys happened to be walking by and overheard and said, we've got a doctor working over about a mile from here that might be able to help your son. So that guy called me and said, don't let them take your eye. Get on a plane. I can help you. And so I flew to Bloomington, Indiana. Talked to the smartest guy I've ever met in my life, and uh, he ended up saving my face, saving my vision. I did end up losing the, the, the sight in my right eye, but I consider myself the luckiest person on the planet. Uh, so anyway, that's, I wanted to tell that story. I knew I had this crazy, crazy story, and I wasn't sure how to tell it. Eventually skipped forward to about eight years ago, my best friend's daughter, who was in school, uh, she got diagnosed. And I'm not saying any of this stuff about cancer to scare anybody. I, I'm, I'm better now, she's fine, um, you know, but it is a scary thing. So, um, so I, I heard what happened to her at school and I was sort of blown away. You guys all know about empathy, right? You guys are all readers. And it's uh, the lack of empathy that was shown to her at school was staggering. Um, she had really mean things said behind her back. She had mean things said straight to her face. And then some of her best friends just ghosted her, just completely vanished and stopped hanging out with her. And I was mortified because I thought it was hard enough going through it as an adult. But I thought maybe if I put it, said it in middle school, I could talk about the importance of empathy and that sort of thing. So, um, so I said it in middle school. Uh, Ross is kind of my stand-in in the book. And uh, as soon as I started writing the book, I started feeling guilty for putting this poor kid through all these horrible things that he goes through. Uh, so I wanted him to have the same 
tools that I had to get through it. One was an amazing support system. My family was amazing. My wife was my rock. Uh, I couldn't give him a wife in the book. You know, he's in seventh grade. That would be weird. So, uh, so he ends up having his best friend, Abby, who everybody should have a best friend like Abby. Uh, but he also starts getting into, like his radiation tech starts getting him into different kinds of music, like punk music which I kind of like. And uh, so I, you know, he starts getting into punk music and, and uh, it fits his mood. It's kind of angry and it's kind of loud. And, uh, and then eventually the tech starts teaching him how to play guitar, which I can do, but not very well. Okay. Um, so eventually I wanted him to have comics because I drew my big top circus comics all through my treatment. And I think it really helped my state of mind to have something, have to think of something funny every day and all that. So eventually, Ross is the one that comes up with Bat Pig. And uh, actually, if you've read Wink, you know first he comes up with Bat Butt. Uh, but he gets in trouble for that, gets sent to the principal's office. And that is a true story. I got sent to the principal's office for drawing Bat Butt on a bunch of people's uh, uh, folders in grade school. Uh, yeah. So he decides it's safer to stick with Bat Pig. So he starts. Uh, you know, you get to see his comics that he draw, draws. And this is kind of how I drew comics when I was in uh, you know, grade school and middle school. Um, and he turns some of the things that he's up against, like this eye goop that I had to wear that would get on everything and stain everything. And it looked gross. And Anyway, he turns it into a, a supervillain. So Wink came out. Wink uh, was well received, and uh, Bat Pig was really well received out of it. So my publisher said, "Hey, you want to keep going?" And I said, "Sure, I do." Which brings us to when pigs fly. And I heard some of you guys answering questions about it. That it even took me a second to be like, "Wait, oh, that's my book." Um, so you guys are awesome, and uh, thank you for knowing those. Um, but anyway, and pig, I'm, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But in when pigs fly, he uh, you get to see how mild-mannered Gary Yorkshire goes from being a normal pig to a superhero. Um, and uh, he, you can see him go up against some awful villains like Repto Man, uh, who is, you know, a potty, humor, magic, obsessed, giant lizard. You get to meet his best friends, Brooke and Carl the Fish, who I always tell students, you know, he's just like a normal student, except occasionally he's got to get wet, so he'll jump in like a pitcher of water or a toilet, whatever's handy. Um, Too Pig to Fail, which you guys are all going to get a signed copy of. Uh, in it, they go up against some, um, some other horrible villains, like a couple of bored aliens who decide to just kind of screw around with Earth for a while, just for fun. And, uh, and then finally, they have to go up against, uh, <laughs> this is the um, Bumble Kitten. Okay, and, and it's a, like half, half kitten, half bee, all, all terror, okay? And, uh, and then those are actually stinky sweat socks all over the ground, so you're going to have to read the book to see how all that ends up happening, okay? And then the third book actually came out this, this year uh, called Go Pig or Go Home, and uh, this one was really fun, too. It's set in, uh, they, they go off to camp in this book, and uh, I will... They run into some more weird characters, like this is Grumbles, the lake monster, who has a bit of a stomach issue. That's how they can always hear him coming, because they hear his gr stomach growling as he's coming around under the water. And, uh, and then maybe my favorite character I've ever put in a book is in this book, and his name is Sharkerham Lincoln. And uh, he is half Abraham Lincoln and half Great White Shark. And so he has the mind of our greatest president, but he, he still has this burning desire to, uh, to eat you know, like baby seals and schools of fish. Yeah, so they have, they have their work cut out for them. Um, a little bit of exciting news. We've got somebody who's talking about making Wink into a movie. We'll see. I need to be really careful so they don't turn it into a movie about astronauts or something, because uh, that's how it went before. Um, and then actually, we've, uh, we, we've been pitching Bat Peg around as an animated TV show, and we've got it out right now. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from Disney, so, and it's been a while, which is apparently good news. So, fingers crossed, fingers crossed on it. And then the next bit of good news, I think, is uh, September 3rd, I have my next novel coming out. It's sort of along the lines of Wink, it's sort of that kind of a book. Uh, 
It's prose with some cartoons mixed in with it. But this one's all about anxiety, because I feel like everybody in the world is dealing with extra anxiety right now. I know I am. Uh, and I've dealt with anxiety since I was a little kid. So uh, Popcorn is a book about a kid who's having sort of the worst day at school imaginable and how he deals with his, his uh, anxiety. Um, that brings us up to today. So I'm looking at how much time we have. I, don't, I saw a clock somewhere. Oh, okay, 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 good. Oh, yeah, right there. How <laughs> oh, I missed that. Um, okay, so we've got a little bit of time. So I thought what I'd do is first take some questions, and then if we can make the switch, we're going to figure out how I can go over there and do some drawing for you guys or with you guys, okay? Okay, so questions, yeah. How long did it take to make um, the Bat Paint books? Uh, you know, the Bat Paint books, it's interesting. Uh, my first graphic novel, Monster on the Hill, took me two and a half years. I, did, I had no idea it was going to take that long. Uh, the first two Bat Pigs each took me a year. And then they called and said they wanted the third book. And my publisher said, can you do it in five months? And I said, maybe. So I, I did it. I almost killed myself doing it. I didn't sleep or eat or talk to people. I was, it was awful. I'll never do it in five months again. That was too fast, way too fast. OK, yeah, over here. Yeah, in the green. It was having eye cancer, and part of what was really hard about writing the book was I had to kind of put myself back in those situations and recall the feelings I had and sort of dredge some of that stuff back up. Um, yeah, it was no fun, and I mean, if you read the book, you'll see, like, I had to wear a cowboy hat for two years. That sounds ridiculous, but they, they wanted me to have this hat to keep the sun off my eye, and I had to wear it indoors, outdoors, and um, that was definitely not my style. So uh, that was embarrassing. But then I lost a bunch of hair and lost my eyebrow. I don't know if you can tell. I still don't have an eyebrow. Uh, those don't come back after radiation. Uh, so yeah, it, it wasn't. It was. It was. It was hard, and it was hard on my family, which was probably the worst part. Yeah, right here. Uh, you know. They, get, they thought they got everything after the uh, surgery and the, and the radiation, but then you have to go, I still go in every year to make sure it hasn't come back. So it, it, there's never one moment where they go, you're clear. Um, although they have recently said, it's been long enough, we think you're clear, but still come back next year. So, um, you know, so there's always a little bit of anxiety hanging in the back there about that. Uh, let's see, way back there standing up, yep. Uh-huh. It did? Good, good. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. All right, yeah. Uh, yeah, right here in the purple. Uh, I don't, right now, there is no you know, immediate request for me to make another Bad Pig book. Um, I, I'll be honest, it just hasn't sold as well. They haven't sold as well as like Wink did. So my publisher is like, can you do more like that? Uh, so you know, they're always trying to steer you towards what sold the best. Um, but if, there, if the TV show happens, I bet there will be more Bad Pig books. And I would love to do more Bad Pig books. I might do one just for kicks and send it to them and be like, well, you want to publish it or not? So um, we'll see. Yeah, right here. That's right. How many, books you have on How many books? I think I'm on my 10th book, if you include the first uh, book. It was a combination of, uh, or it was a collection of all my com big top comic strips. Um, or actually, the first like nine months of the comic. Um, and then, yeah, but then, and then, you know, one way to have made myself a bigger name might have been to do the same kind of book over and over, but um, I, I guess I get bored with that, so I keep bouncing around and doing graphic novels and hybrid novels and all this, and so um, maybe that's maybe that's not the best way to run a, a career. I'm not sure. Okay, back there in the glasses. Yeah. Yeah, you. In the gray. Do you have glasses on? Yeah, okay. I thought you did. I didn't even call it out. Okay. 
Right is decided what? Popcorn? Uh, I, had, I had really bad anxiety when I was a kid. I'll be honest, when I was in grade school, middle school, high school, I used to get kind of sick to my stomach before school every day. Uh, I just had crippling anxiety and it led to panic attacks, which I deal with in the book. And uh, I just, I've learned a lot since then. I've done a lot of therapy and things like that and I've learned some ways to, so I, there are actually some things in the book that could teach you how to deal with anxiety if it's something that's really bothering you. But it's also done with a sense of humor, just like Wink. So while they sound like a heavy, heavy book, they're actually a lot of fun to read, and I try to put as much humor in there as I can. Yeah, back there in the green. Yeah. <laughs> What's my favorite book I've written? That's like asking somebody, well, who's your favorite kid? Um, it's, it's hard. I can make a case for any of them. Uh, I will say I'm probably the proudest of Wink and Popcorn because they, they took the most out of me and they were the most personal. Um, but I also love the funny ones and I think like the Zarf books and, and the Bad Pig books were just pure fun to write and, and draw. And then Monster on the Hill, I'll be honest, I was in kind of a depression when I started that book. And uh, that, I wrote that book. If you read between the lines when you're reading Monster on the Hill, it's sort of a book about pulling yourself out of a, out of a hole, out of a depression. And uh, so it, it has a really close spot to me, too. Um, so, which hurt when they took that movie idea, that book idea and turned it into a wrestling movie uh, for monsters. You know, that was weird. Uh, yeah, right here. How do I draw them? Actually, I'll tell you, the one cool thing is that I draw digitally most of the time. Here in just a second, I'm going to draw uh, traditionally. But uh, I have a computer where I can actually draw right on the screen. It's called a uh, Cintiq. And um, it saves so much time because when I lost the sight in this eye, I lost my depth perception. And so it's very hard to know when the pen's going to hit the you know, hit the paper, and so I was making a lot of messes. So I eventually uh, switched over to drawing electronically, and I could keep my finger right on the delete button, and sometimes it's like, draw the line, nope, draw the line, nope, draw the line, nope, and uh, it saves saves so much, so much effort, um, and it's so much quicker. Uh, yeah, sure, it's here. Yeah. Uh, Yes, I would say write all the time. Try writing all kinds of stuff. Try writing cartoons, try writing 10-page stories, try writing one-page stories, try writing 20-page stories. I, I think the more you write, the better you'll get. And it's the same with art. When I was in art school, they made us carry around a, um, carry around a uh, sketchbook at all times, and we had to be able to uh, uh, show them what we'd drawn every day. And, uh, you know, it had to be dated and all that. And so the, the point is, if you do it every day, you'll get better at it. You'll get better at it fast. So um, uh, keep that up. Yeah, right here. Um, when Pop Girl comes out, are you going to make another one? Uh, another book uh, or another popcorn? Like another book? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'm working on. I'm working on a couple of ideas. I had one idea that's sort of a little darker, sort of wrong side of the tracks a little rougher around the edges. Um, my agent doesn't seem entirely thrilled about that one. So, huh? He seemed excited. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I like the idea. Um, it, it's a little bit, it, I don't know if any of you guys know what Stand By Me is or The Outsiders or anything. Yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of book I would love to write next. And I started, and my agent is sort of dragging his feet on it, so I don't know. Um, I've also got a funnier just a funnier um, middle, middle grade novel in mind, too. He keeps pushing me towards graphic novels because he says that's what the market wants right now. Um, but he doesn't have to draw them, you know? It's a lot, of, a lot of work doing the drawings. So, Okay, let, let's see if we can switch over. Is that cool? And I'm going to do some drawing for you guys. I know you got more questions, but I guarantee you the drawing, if we can get this to work, this is going to be... This will be a hit. Okay. All right. There, it worked. This is amazing. Let's see, am I right side up? Nope. 
Okay. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. First, I thought I'd start out by showing you guys how to draw Bat Pig, just because he's near and dear to our hearts and was the answer to a few questions today. Okay, so when I draw a bat pig, I keep thinking there's something on the paper. Oh, it was the cursor. Okay. Um, I always start with his mask, or, you know, in Batman speak, they call it his cowl, I think, uh, which basically means a mask that goes over your face, I think. I could be wrong. Um, and when I draw a bat pig, I also try not to draw him too perfectly. I make the lines a little looser, a little sloppier because he started out as Ross's character in Wink. And so I try to stay true to that. So I also like to give him like a couple of loose threads sticking off of his mask. Now, some things I do don't even make sense. I give him a little tuft of hair sticking out of his mask, which makes no sense, but it makes me laugh. So that's the great thing about cartooning is you, you make the rules, right? Um, okay. Now, I love drawing Bat Pig's snout because he's got a long, bent kind of, it looks like, yeah. And if you look at real pigs, they don't have noses like that. But I figure he's a new superhero, so he's probably smashed, you know, snout first into a few buildings. Um, so it's kind of crinkled up and jammed up. Okay. Now, I'm going to give him a big smile because, you know, it's Bat Pig. He's a pretty happy guy. At least when he's got his uniform on. It's funny with Bat Pig, I tried to write it so that he's a little bit neurotic when he doesn't have his superhero thing on, but then when he puts on his superhero costume, he, he almost becomes a little bit um, cocky or arrogant, you know, like uh, he thinks he's kind of hot stuff when he's got his cape on. So it always looks like he's wearing a V-neck t-shirt when you draw that part, but then you put the little knot, you got his... Uh, cape that's going to come around the back on this side and over here it's got to kind of loop down over behind his arm okay now i always like my characters to look like maybe they're not having the best day it just makes them seem a little more human to me so like maybe his outfit doesn't quite fit it's a little big or sometimes maybe it's a little small like he just ate a big meal and <laughs> he's a little uncomfortable his clothes. I don't know why. I think of these things when I draw it, uh, just to uh, try to give them a little bit more life. So then he gets these weird little gloves. I'll let you in on a bat pig secret, and if you go back, you can look at this, and this is true. Sometimes he has fingers, and sometimes he has hooves. And again, I made up the rules, so that's fine. Um, now, if they ever animate him, they'll have to decide, one, one or the other. But uh, now, like most good superheroes, he wears his underwear on the outside of his pants for some reason. I think we can blame Bat Batman for that or something. Um, probably Superman. Probably Superman's the origin. Okay, now the hardest part of drawing Bat Pig is drawing his legs because he's got these chubby little legs and they have to fit down into these tiny little boots. So from my mind, the smaller his boots are, the funnier he looks. So... I draw him like that. I think of his legs as being like almost like little upside down shark fins. And then he draws little legs in there. Okay. And then I'm gonna finish off his cape. I'll give him a little curly tail sticking down there. Um, now, that's Bat Pig, but let, we're not done yet, okay? Because I'm gonna show you some things that I learned from Charles Schultz. Anybody know who Charles Schultz is? Yeah, yeah he created Charlie Brown and Snoopy and, and all of them, right? And he was sort of a master at doing a whole lot with very little. Like, he, he was a minimalist. So with just a few lines, now it doesn't look like he's just floating in the middle of the page. It looks like he's actually standing on something, casting a shadow, right? Uh, and then you can put in some little dashes like that, and it makes it clear that he's standing in some grass. And then another thing that he did a lot is all you have to do is draw a single line for the horizon line, basically where the sky meets the grass. Then you can put in some little squigglies for bushes, maybe put some shading in there. Maybe one of those tall Italian looking evergreen things. I like to draw those. Um, so there you go. And you got some bushes. I put a few more lines back here just to kind of indicate that there's a little grass happening.
And then most importantly, well, actually, I'm not even done yet. I'm going to show you guys. This is something that cartoonists do sometimes, these little presenting lines. And it just basically kind of says, like, ta-da. Like, here, here he is, right? And then uh, he's kind of an arrogant guy when he's got his uniform on. So I'm going to call him, have him yell in his own name, uh, which seems appropriate. Uh, so let me draw a little word bubble there. This is hard to do one-handed. But um, And then now, I was going to say, the most important thing, of course, is to put your name. This is not a joke. We actually spent one class when I was in art school learning how to sign your name. <laughs> they, like, they talked about where you could put it, where you could do it, how do you do it big, do you do it small, like all the different reasons for all the... I was like, let's just sign our work, okay? Uh, okay, so that's how you draw a bad pick, right there, okay? So now, thank you. Okay, this is going to be the best part, okay? Uh, I sometimes, when I'm not sure what I want to draw, I'll just start drawing monsters. You know, you saw that's how that led to Monster on the Hill. Um, and I think one of the ways that I do that is by just kind of taking different parts of different animals or things and putting them all together. So I'm going to need your guys' suggestions here, okay? So hold on. And I'm going to ask for, like, a body type. And you could say a gorilla. Or, if you want, we can make this as weird as we want because it's cartoons and we can make it as weird as we want. You could say, I want his body to be a Pop-Tart, okay? Whatever you want to do. Or you could say his head could be a trash can or uh, he has bananas for arms, whatever. Um, or you can say an animal. You know, you can always say an animal too. So, uh, somebody give me a body type uh, right here. KFC chicken legs. KFC chicken legs? Okay, but that's not the body type. I need the body type first. What? Oh, you want the, you want it to be a KFC chicken leg. I got gotcha. you. Okay. 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 Somebody give me legs quick. Uh, yeah, right there. KFC bucket as the head. All right. Bat pig ears. Is that all on there? Uh, is the KFC bucket striped, right? Uh, but then I got to give him eyes. Okay. And maybe some teeth. Okay. Somebody give me some arms. I need arms. Uh, over the, there at the far... Uh, the, yep. What? Ferret arms? Bear arms. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just putting in the basics here. When I'm done, I can go in and put kind of shading and stuff like that in. Okay, somebody give me some weird legs. I need some weird legs. Uh, back there with the blonde hair. Donkey legs? Okay, we can do that. I don't even know really what donkey legs are. And that's, that's part of the thing that I, I, I won't even look it up. Well, we're going to make him, we can make him goofier looking, so we just need to. Yeah, I don't know if that really looks like a donkey legs. Yeah, this does look like certainly slightly demonic. Let's, let's, let's do something weird like bananas for wings or something. Somebody give me something right here. Uh, dark hair standing up there. Yeah. Yeah. A corporate what? Oh, a corporate cats? Yeah. Incorporate. I thought you said a corporate. I'm like, what's a corporate cat? I don't know what a corporate cat is. Okay, I will do a cat tail. 
Yeah, I'll put some whiskers on there. That'll cute him up a little bit. I'll also give him a little belly button. There. And then... Uh, Okay. Okay, now anything else you can think of you want, like a unicorn horn, or we could do, um, there could be like, uh, we could act like give him a t shirt or something. Anyway, uh, Ray, he, well, hold on, I'm trying to think of somebody I haven't called on. Uh, How about this? Put your hand down if I've already called on you. If I have called on you. Okay. Uh, yeah, right here in the gray. Gray, yep. Yeah. Banana peel wings, I love that. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna. It almost looks like fire, but it's banana peel wings. Okay. Okay. Uh, somebody else, give me something right here. A brain? Yes. His brain will be showing out of the top of the bucket. I think that's good. Yeah. There. There's a little question mark. Okay. Uh, anybody else got anything? Like you want a number on his chest or something written on his chest? Uh, anybody? Let's see over here. Yeah. Add a book? Yeah, absolutely. That's really smart. He's going to be holding a book. Uh, what do you think when pigs fly? <laughs> you can only tell that by the initials. <laughs> That's going to be tougher. I'll have a meeting. Um, I don't know what. Uh, out of all the books you guys read, I don't have any, like, you know, enemies. Enemies out of those people. <laughs> Okay, that's another book. Okay, okay. Now I'm gonna give him like some little fluffy, you know, fur or kind of. I guess that's chicken wing batter. I don't know. It's a little disturbing. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna put give him some shade here, so he's standing on something. And then I think what we need really importantly right now is a name. So can somebody just give me a first name? I just need a. First name. <laughs> that is not a first name. I need a first name. Uh, yeah, right here. Jeff. Okay. So this is going to be Jeff, the banana chicken donkey. He could end up in my next book. You never know. There you go. All right. There you go. And I will leave these with you guys. I got time I could do another real quick one, or are we about out of time? Real quick one. Okay. So we're only going to, we're going to have to think fast on this one, all right? Somebody give me a, a body shape, something not crazy detailed. Uh, uh, yeah, right there in the glasses. Front row, front row. <laughs> Peter Griffin's body. Okay, that's all I'm doing for Peter Griffin's body so far, all right? Because that's, I don't want it to get weird. Okay, uh, somebody give me legs right here. Noodle legs, okay. So we're going to finish this off. And then he's going to have... Those were the noodle legs on Peter Griffin's body. Well, hey, give me a head and let's 
let's start to get near the end of this guy. Uh, yeah, right here. What was it? Gorilla arms. Okay, let's do it. The gorilla arms, right? Okay. All right. okay. Now, somebody give me a head. Uh, I need a head back there in the white. Yeah. A cracked eggshell head. I love it. All right. How about ears? Can I get ears? Uh, let me go to the back of the black. Yep. Ears? Anything. All right. Perfect. He almost looks like Shrek or something. Okay, um, let's go on to, um, I want him wearing a t-shirt. What does it say on the t-shirt? Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Bob? Okay. There he is. Perfect. Thank you all. All right, there we go. Thanks, all. You guys were really good, and I want to say congratulations to all the winners in here. What a cool event you guys did today, and uh, it's amazing. I heard you read 22 or more books or something like that, and that's 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 awesome. So uh, keep it up. Read more of mine, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, but you guys were fantastic. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. What a great afternoon, followed by a fabulous morning. And I appreciate everything that the coaches have done, organizing your team, practicing with your team, um, putting in a lot of hours for this great program. So um, one of the first things we want to make sure, if you have something in another room, somebody's going to have to go get that because the buses are here. But if you have things under your chair, you need to hold them. Uh -huh. So I have the first set of 